Well, I'm getting started on a little panda router project here for the shop, and uh, this is primarily used to cut mortise and tenons. It was initially designed by a gentleman in Canada named Matthias Wandel, and I hope I haven't butchered his name. I'll put a link description down below so you can go and take a look and maybe have a better idea of what's going on with this. This is the initial layout, and it's printed. This is a set of his plans that he sells, and uh, this is printed off of uh, the computer. So we've got pretty much a full-size view. A lot of times I'll just fly by the seat of my plant pants when I'm building something. But on stuff like this, it gives me a little bit of perspective of size and exactly what I'm building. So if, if I've got a set of plans that, that will show a full-size view, I'll normally do it. But what we're looking at here is a side view of the machine. And what I'm doing today is I'm cutting out the base plate and the sliding table that, that runs the router itself. And here's the layout of this. This is our table where we're going to mount whatever it is we want to cut. In this case, it's a, a, a tenon that's laid on its side, and we're cutting out here. This is a, a router on its side, and this is our cutting bit. And we're following a pattern, which is mounted up here. So what I'm building today is just the initial base plate, and then there's a sliding table, which is operated by this lever, and it slides back and forth, which moves this whole assembly back and forth to uh, adjust our depth of cut. We've got depth stops here, and... Um, that initially it had, he designed it with a set of drawer slides that he's tightened up and they're laid flat so it slides on those balls in, the, in that set of drawer slides. What I've done is I'm going to install a set of linear rails with uh, ball screw guides or ball screws on them and the only changes I'm going to have to make to do that is it's going to raise this whole assembly a little bit so I'm going to have to adjust the adjust the height. I'll have to raise my table a little bit more to accommodate that um, and then the height of the stops if they're affixed to the base plate and things like that but nothing really really major has to be changed to do that little change and I think I can get a little bit smoother motion out of it and a little bit tighter tolerances on, the, on those ball screws so that's what I'm doing today. This is a side view and then this is a top view of the whole assembly we're looking at the whole base plate here. These would be our stops we were looking at. These are his initial drawer slides, which is where I'm mounting my uh, linear rails. And then this is a sliding table outline here that sets on top of those. So that's what I'm working on today, like I say, just getting the, getting the two main components cut out and, and getting started on it. All the dimensions are in metric.
Then we'll go to the bandsaw to finish these cuts. So here is the base plate and the sliding plunge table for uh, on this panda router. And I'm pretty much going to build this according to plans. There will be a few changes because it seems like I can't leave anything alone. I have to make a few changes. But what I did was I just used uh, pre-finished birch plywood. Now one of the changes I am going to make is rather than using drawer slides like he used on the original designs that he did and are shown in the plans, what I'm going to do is I went ahead and ordered a linear rail. And of course I've got a pair of these. These are 400 millimeter ball rails. And, uh, and we've got four ball screws that go with them. And they'll slide right on the right on the ends like that. And we'll adjust them once we get a, everything set in place for the tension on them. But if you're not aware what a what a uh, ball screw does or what these rails do is there's actually four rows. I don't know if we can see them on here or not. If we look down in here and the light's going to be bad. See, we've got four rows of those little ball screws, and they run in a little channel, and uh, those balls just roll along and rotate through. So it's a nice, smooth motion uh, with very little play. So these are, uh, of course, I'm sure they're imported screws. I sourced them from a U.S. supplier, but I'm sure they're imported. We'll have two, uh, two nuts on each of the, uh, each of the rails. And they'll sit There'll be two of them here. set underneath like that to allow our table to slide back and forth. Uh, this doesn't create any problems. I'll have to watch the plans a little bit closer because it adds quite a bit more height. Uh, of course a standard set of door, drawer slides laying flat on their backs, you know, front to back rather than vertically like they normally would be, have quite a bit lower profile than these do. So we'll have to make adjustments for the table height and um, oh, all of the the stop blocks and all of those things will have to be adjusted for that height. And, uh, they show some little wooden dust covers, basically, that run up and down the sides of them just to keep uh, chips and dirt out of the, out of the uh, rails, no matter which style you use. So the size of those will have to be adjusted and things like that. Um, these are probably a little bit longer rails than I need, but I want a little more travel if I can get it than probably is shown in the original set of plans. Um, I would ultimately like to have probably about four and a half or five inches of plunge. The main reason for building this, uh, this is primarily used, I think most of the guys are using it for mortise and tenon joinery. And uh, from looking at the videos of them happening, it does a real good job. What I want it for primarily is I build a recoil system for the trap shooters that go in the stock of, the, of a shotgun. And I machine away a fair amount. There's with the current design I've got two holes that are bored and uh, then there's a up and down slot. My original plan was, and I'd looked for quite some time for a horizontal boring machine to to do the main boring on that, but it still would uh, create a need for some other fixturing and tooling to be able to finish the cuts in those stocks the way I do them. So other than the initial cheek piece cut, I think this will do a real good job. I think um, I've got a, some machining that has to be done on the top of the stock when, it's, when the rest of it's done, but I think that can be done with some simple fixtures that are added to this setup, and those can be routed out. But I think this might be the solution to, to do the rest of the machining within those stocks. So that's my primary reason for building this, and I'll throw a picture up of a couple of these stocks to show at least the finished product, to show what I'm doing. All right, well, I've taken my sliding platform and I went ahead and drilled and countersunk it. And what I did is I aligned it first, figured out where the approximately where the center lines were, and I went ahead and marked these bottom ones first, laid out these because they were the ones that were going to need adjustment. And I've got a little bit of adjustment in there so I can move them around a little bit. We've countersunk them, 
and we've got our ball slides mounted on here. So they're all in alignment. They still need to be final tightened down. Then I went ahead, found the center line on the on the base plate, of course. Took my linear linear rails and set them in place in the ball screws. Clamped them in place once I had them to where I thought they were aligned. Went ahead and drilled one screw in each side um, to make sure we had alignment. Got them on there. Checked my lines and dimensions, and um, then I've added the second screw. So we're just going to go back through. I'll lightly drill all of the rest of these holes. Go ahead and put screws in them, and then we'll do the final fit on the on the top. And this will all get disassembled again down the road just so I can round the edges and glue the things in place that need to be glued and everything. But for right now we're just going to screw everything in position and make sure we've got alignment right. Alright, this is the back of the table obviously, or the back of the machine. The uh, table will set up here and hold our workpiece. Router will sit in here in this direction. So it looks like if I figured it right, I've got about five and a half inches of travel. I don't know how that will actually work out with the table. We'll have to check those dimensions as we get closer, but that's very close to what I wanted. That's about half my travel there, so I'm really, really happy with that. So um, there's this portion of it done. So the next thing I'll start on is probably the table. Um, I don't know what else goes on this plat and we'll figure out that and the dust covers and things like that. Um, like I say we'll have to change some dimensions underneath for the uh, for our work stops and stuff like that because we've raised this platen up probably a good oh see we're two inches up off of there or if we're looking at metric about 50 millimeter yeah 50 millimeters so uh, we probably brought that up 40 millimeters you know inch and a half inch and three quarter um, from what it was originally drawn in the plans, which will be fine. We'll just have to make adjustments there accordingly. And um, we'll go on from there. Once we get everything fitted up and things in the position, then we'll disassemble it again, sand it around the edges. You know, I don't need to have these sharp edges out here. I've already chipped one place right here. So we'll round those edges, smooth it up, get a little more finish on the edges. This was pre-finished, so it's got a fairly decent surface, although it's not very rugged. So we want to be careful with it when we, when we assemble it. But anyway... There's our ball slides installed. So that's going to work really well. It's good and solid. I haven't tightened them up at all. I'll wait and do final adjustment on those balls um, once we get everything set in place permanently. But right now we've got, I can't feel any, any wiggle room at all in any direction. So I'm really happy with that. That's going to work well. So anyway, hopefully you found something interesting. I hope you uh, hang around for this build. I think it's going to be a relatively quick build, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a, another useful tool for in the shop. So hopefully you found something useful, and uh, if you haven't already, as usual, I appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. And any th comments, thoughts, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.